The Impact Lounge is the number one place to be for the real Impact Wrestling fans. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Impact Lounge. I am BQ. I've got Adam and Ro in the place to be. The Impact Lounge is the number one place to be for news, reviews, interviews, and previews in the world of Impact Wrestling. We are going to be talking Bound for Glory today. Previewing this show happens this Sunday. Are you guys uh, excited for Bound for Glory like you were? I'll start with Adam. Are you guys excited for Bound for Glory like you were for Slammiversary? Oh, man, I wish you had to come to me first because people have been criticizing me for being negative. Uh, Should I just cut you heel. off right now? Should I just cut you off and go to row? <laughs> no, no. T- to be fair, there's some good matches on there, which uh, we'll touch on as, as we go in. You know, really looking forward to, for example, the LAX match. I think that would be great. I'm interested to see what's going to happen with Eli Drake. And to be honest, barring what I think might happen in the main event, as in the result, I- I'm looking forward to it because I, you know, I, I think our scenarios has been great. I just just hope he retains. And see, for me, while I'm looking forward to it, I find myself wondering why do they have trouble with the buildup for Bound for Glory? It feels like deja vu when you think of last year. And obviously, I know they had their things going on with the whole Jared debacle. But uh, I'm really looking forward to see how some of the matches uh, turn out. I'll even say the year before, too. And I can't go back any further because I a memory doesn't work that well. I don't remember the build for the... Uh... The one where is is Galloway and EC3 and Hardy in the main event, but um, as far as uh, you know, two years ago, it was that's when EC3 took on Lashley in the main event, and that one also felt extremely rushed compared to what they're doing with Slammiversary. And I guess I guess what makes sense is you know between Slammiversary and Bound for Glory, there's just a few months, and then between Bound for Glory and Slammiversary, there's a whole damn you know over half a year. Now, granted, there was the Redemption pay per view that was more of a B show. Didn't take a whole lot of build necessarily to put it together. So I think there's just more time, more focus for Slammiversary. And then I think at the end of the year, people just uh, dial it back a little. I think we do that. It's, I think it's human nature as adults. If it's your first time listening to the Impact Lounge podcast, please give us a subscribe, whether it's on YouTube or wherever it is that you get your streaming podcast from. Give us a subscription. This is the number one place for the Impact Wrestling fans. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to start from the top. This is something we've been doing new lately. We're going to start with the main event. And uh, I guess before I get to that, is there anything else anyone wants to say about their opinions on the build of the show? You know, I just think because wasn't Bound for Glory in, I know they most recently did it, but before it used to be in November, right? Yeah, I think oh. it was. No, 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 no. It was uh the last last year was in November. I know at least the previous two years. I think even more than that, it was October. Because I went for my birthday one year, so I know it was October in, in uh, 16. You know, the only thing comment I'll make is I think what they should start doing is, and they did this, and I know they botched it some years back, but when they had the Bound for Glory series, while I wasn't a fan of it, I think some type of tournament, I think that helps build, you know, especially when you're talking about the main event, I think having some sort of tournament, I think that would help moving forward when they're trying to build Bound for Glory. Yeah, I absolutely agree with Roe on that one. I I think that two of these matches with with Taya and and Johnny Impact have come out of nowhere. And just with a little build, I think uh, we would be, um, would have been really, really good, you know, with with the Bound for Glory series. I I like the concept and I know there's always been injuries and people have left those kind of things in in the the TNA years. But I I think as a concept, it's unique and and I'd love to have seen it again. All right, so let's ask this question. Uh, before we kind of get into the main event, we're going to talk Austin Aries versus Johnny Impact. So I'll, I'll go to you, Ro, first, since Adam is Mr. Negativity, apparently. We're going to go to <laughs> Ro here. What did you think about the bill for Bound for Glory being in Mexico? Now, this is opposed to Toronto or Windsor or whatever, wherever they could have done, Orlando for all I care. How do you think this, uh, trying to do it in Mexico? Because remember, uh, last year they built Slammiversary in, in uh, India. And a lot of the wrestlers on the card didn't actually get to go to India. So this is this is a little bit similar, complete different audience that they hadn't been in front of before. So so what do you think about now for the record? I don't I know I'm not usually on the impact reviews anymore. I like the episodes in Mexico. Um, I know I know it's uh, people are kind of hot and warm on them. But what, what do you think, Ro, as far as that Balfour Glory build and just just being in another country? 
I feel it's been more of a miss than hit for me. Um, I think had they had these tapings post Bound for Glory, I think they would have went over a little bit better. Um, but like Adam has said, though, they've come across more as Twitch shows to me. And then most this most recent episode of Impact, it was really apparent, like when you had Eli Drake doing his whole shit and, you know, the crowd wasn't really recept- receptive. And I know you can argue, you know, the language barrier or whatever, but it just a lot of them have just been more misses and hits. If anything, the promo work has been the things that have had me looking forward towards Bound for Glory as far as the build wise. Yeah, I absolutely agree on that as well. Um, I, I think that for me, no problem going to another country uh, to film, you know, UK, Canada, wherever it may be. Uh, the issue has been, I think, the language barrier. You get a guy like Eli Drake, who is, is magic on the mic. Same with Austin Aries. And it's really kind of not resonated with the crowd, which, which affects it. You know, it affects the the feel of the show when you've got a guy's killing, you know, killing it on the on the stick and... And the crowd's not really reacting to it. So this was something I said before the tapings happened. I did an upload on the channel, and I just I know this as being a Hispanic. There we have a different. Um, now, now, granted, uh, I, I've grown up in the United States, but my family all Puerto Rican. Okay, we got a different uh, sense of humor. We t- we take things indifferently. We interpret things differently, and in Mexico. I don't. I'm not really familiar with that with Mexico City per se. I've I've been to Mexico a couple times as a tourist, as a teenager, but I do know in a lot of parts of that country they don't speak English. So it's not like going to the Caribbean where they um they've they've been taught English in in grade school. You know that it's not really like that in Mexico. So I don't know how many of the people in the crowd actually knew what was was being said. I have I have absolutely no idea. Where did you go, when, uh, Adam, when you were vacationing? Was it that area or no? Uh, yeah, I went to Cancun, but I mean that that really is a holiday hotspot. So uh, yeah, a lot of people did did speak uh, English there, you know. Uh, so yeah, so that wasn't a, a, an issue. But you know, th- there was no resting shows there when I was there. Uh, it, it really is a tourist trap. So I, I'm not sure where these are filmed. Is it Mexico City or Mexico City? Yeah, I, I mean there will be people speaking. Uh, English there, but I mean, at, at this, you know, your typical Mexican wrestling fan is going to want to watch wrestling, and I think they would have had the same problem if they'd gone to Japan, you know, where the crowds are very much, you know, sitting on their hands, you know, wanting to watch, you know, the the art of wrestling and not see promos, and you know, and that's that's the problem with all this. But you know, I think on paper it was a great idea because you're going to get a great crowd, but I just think it was at the wrong time to do it. You know, they've got Vegas tapings coming up after Bound for Glory. If they could have switched those around, I think that would have been a much better build. And that was something I said too. I, I grew up watching Lucha Libre. A lot of to a lot of wrestling fans, Lucha Libre is like the Lucha Dragons. You know what I'm saying? But I actually grew up watching it as a kid, and it's a very um, the, the story is told in the ring. There's not like mic work and and things like that. Now, as far as the current incarnation of AAA and Crash and all that stuff, I I couldn't really tell you. But I know growing up watching it, the story was always told in the ring so one thing i want to say they did a phenomenal job was which uh, maybe this annoyed some people but i thought the inclusion of you know spanglish into the promos and to, and to those who like tie johnny impact who can you know speak the language um i thought they did a really good job with that so that is one thing i really want to give them props on they did it without without being overbearing about it you know they just kind of kind of threw it in there so l- let's get into the main event though and, and again I actually have enjoyed the Mexico tapings probably more than uh, most people. I just I just relate to it a little bit differently, I guess. But so let's talk main event. This is uh, Austin Aries versus Johnny Impact. And if you guys remember, Johnny Impact just kind of showed up one day and said, "Hey, I, I am challenging you for the title." I personally thought Eddie Edwards was going to get this spot with where they were going with that, and I think it would have been a little bit more of exciting of a match because Eddie, Eddie Edwards was a little hotter. But, you know, let's be real from a marketing standpoint, Johnny Impact just take, you know, taking part in Survivor right now. I don't watch that show. I don't actually don't really enjoy Survivor at all. So I don't know if he's still on it right now. I have no clue whatsoever. So on YouTube, you guys can uh, keep us informed in the comments what's going on with Johnny Impact and Survivor. Now, my personal opinion, I don't think it's going to bring new uh, casual audience to, to the show, you know, but. But I can understand he's a guy who's more likely to be trending in social media than some of the other people in the roster. So we'll go to Adam first main event. 
I know you've got some uh, things to say about about the build in general for it and how it just kind of came out of nowhere. But the match itself actually should be outstanding. Yeah, and the one thing I will say, you know, I've always, <laughs> unsurprisingly for me, been critical of uh, Johnny Impact's move set. You know, I, I never feel like, you know, it, it looks like it's devastating. But he's facing someone smaller than him. So I think for that point of view, it will look good. I think it'll be a, a quick high-flying match. There'll be some good spots in it. Austin Aries can, could carry anyone to a good match. And he can also build a feud. So, you know, I think they've built the feud well as well as they could possibly have with Johnny Impact. I just really hope that... It, I'm torn between this because if they don't put the belt on Johnny Impact, I don't know if you want us to, to make our prediction, but if they don't put the belt on him, then where does he go from here? I, I don't know. But if they do put the belt on him, I don't want to see it on him for very long because I don't particularly like him on the mic. You know, I don't think he's someone that you would build, but I don't think you build a show around him. See, and as far as the build, um, I think, you know, at first it came off as just he was next challenger in line. And, you know, for the past couple of weeks, they've done a great job of trying to get us invested into the match. I will say the one thing I do have a concern about is it seems that, you know, he's the the company guy in Johnny Impact. And he's been, like you said, BQ in times past, he's been given shot after shot after shot after shot. So eventually he has to capitalize on it. And I just wonder if they'll get any fan backlash, you know, from, as far as, you know, here, we want to make him champion. But I mean, you know, it seems like a lot of people, he does have his own fans in his own right. So that's probably not a concern. But the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to, I really want to see what Johnny Impact does in this match. He needs to bring something that he hasn't done in any of his other matches or the promo that Austin Aries just gave, especially if Johnny Impact doesn't come out victorious, it's going to give credence to what Austin Aries said. I'm glad Johnny Impact isn't a company. I don't want a, that to be misconstrued in any way whatsoever. He's he's still got that WWE move set to me a little bit to where when you watch one of the matches, now I'm... I know I, I refer to this a lot and haven't watched in years, but I'm pretty sure they stick to the same formula. The matches are usually almost exactly the same. You can put two people against each other and they're always getting their shit in. It's always the same move set. It's always the same setup moves and the same gimmick moves. And there's no, there's no chances. It, it just it feels like you're just continually watching the same stuff. And like with Johnny impact, I get that a little bit. Like I I'm, I'm looking for him to do something a little different this time around. He has the ability to do it. Lord knows. So I think he will, but I think they've done a, a pretty good job the last couple weeks of getting us involved. I thought that promo they did in the ring the other day was excruciatingly long. Um, yeah, Austin Aries did amazing in it, and I actually thought when Johnny Impact came back since the since the product has been a little edgier, I thought they were going to because he's he's up there with Eddie Edwards as far as like straight cheese, you know what I mean? As far as like the old Eddie Edwards, and they had to toughen him up a little bit and making him a little darker and a little rougher, give him some edge. Like I really thought they were going to find a way to do that with Johnny impact. And he kind of came back with the same turd cutter and all that stuff, which I mean, I don't even think my kids laughed at that. <laughs> we, were, we were watching that on TV. You know what I mean? So um, I, I just, if it was just Austin Aries versus Johnny impact, then he never had this whole moose and killer cross thing happen. Then I say, yeah, yeah, you know, that'd be cool. Let's see what the run looks like. But I'm, I'd love what, that team is doing just just to go back to johnny impact uh, i wholeheartedly agree he's an absolute asset to the company and, and i want him to stick around for a long time i see him in the aj styles x division champ kind of territory someone who could keep that belt for a long long time and, and you know really make it something i just don't see him as the face of the company if that makes sense so so yeah, uh, that's just my tuppence on, on Johnny Impact and his states with Impact. I definitely don't want to see him go. I, I think he could be amazing. And, and, you know, we always say, oh, we should turn him here, we should turn him here. That's the answer to everything. I think Johnny Impact needs it. And see, I, I just think what they're going to do if we're given predictions, I can see Johnny Impact being victorious, but I don't see his reign being much long, maybe a couple of months. And then I could easily see him dropping it right back to Austin Aries. Is that so? Is that your official prediction for what they do? Uh, if he wins, yeah. I I just don't see because I I feel like it's come to the point it's either now or never with him because 
in outside of maybe what he's done in AAA, he's in any of the promotions he's been in, he's never really carried the main belt. So this is, and he's gotten multiple shots in Impact. So it's either now or never. But once they pull the trigger, I don't see him being a no long reigning champion. And if he were to drop it, I could easily see him dropping it right back to Aries. All right, I got the same exact prediction. What do you got, Adam? I, I I've got it, but with a slight tweak. I reckon he's going to win the title, and by some screwy finish that they're going to have the rematch straight away after Killer Cross intervenes and Aries wins it back straight away. So I reckon his title reign is going to be five minutes long. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, fair enough. What we're going to do here, I'm going to work kind of backwards for the most part, what I think is the most uh, important match on the show. And for the sake of argument, we're recording this on Monday, October 8th, my birthday. Uh, We're recording it. uh, Happy birthday. Oh, thank you very much. (laughs) Uh, several days before Bound for Glory, there's only six matches announced. We are going to be under the assumption, and that's how we're going to deliver the show. We're going to be under the assumption that Ali and Sue Young are going to have a match, and we're going to be under the assumption that Eli Drake is going to have an open challenge. So to keep it simple, we're going to talk about those towards the end and talk about uh, what we know is going to happen sooner and talk about the more, more, more important matches sooner. So let's get into uh, the Knockouts Championship. So we already brought up Taya. So Taya is challenging Tessa Blanchard. This was the one match that I predicted correctly would happen. I said I think we're going to get a babyface Taya because I, you know, I know they could introduce her in Mexico. She could uh, seamlessly work her way back into the company in in Mexico, even though it was just you know done on the uh, the big screen. I really felt that was the the only option at this point. You know, she she had pretty much beat everybody, so we do get Taya. So I'm okay with this because. Tessa's running through people, and it's like it's just like who's next, you know, Goldberg. Um, so I think that's a little bit different than with the whole Austin Aries thing. So I was okay with the way this came about. I just want to say, first of all, I think this has the potential to be the best knockouts championship match, best knockouts match actually in a very long time. I think the last match I really enjoyed was uh, was actually with Taya. Was uh, I mean, I shouldn't say I enjoy most of the matches, but I mean, the one that really left me. And all was Taya versus uh, Rosemary, the uh, Demon's Dance match. So I thought that was really, really good. And then previous to that, Jade and um, Rosemary had a couple really good ones. But in the last couple years, we haven't really had that like killer knockouts match. This really has the potential to be that. So uh, Ro, we'll go to you first on Tessa versus Taya. You know, and it's funny that you mentioned that because that's the one thing I had noticed, and I mentioned this with Adam when we got the promo uh, in Mexico. It seemed like Taya has gone face because her whole character just seemed different. Um, It's fresh. I'm all about fresh when it comes to the knockouts because it seems that we always get from time and time again, like people not being able to break away from one another. So as far as this, while I'm looking forward to it, I'm hoping they're able to build a rivalry because I think it'll give Tessa something to do because Tessa has run through pretty much everyone. I mean, I guess you can argue maybe she could do something with Sue Young, but Sue Young's obviously involved with Ali, which seems like forever. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Now, as far as the outcome of this match, um, a part of me believes I could see uh, two different scenarios. I could see Taya winning via disqualification so they can uh, extend the feud. And I can also see them putting the belt on her. There's a part of me believing that they want to kind of do similar to what happened, I want to say, over a decade ago where you had Benoit and Eddie Guerrero both win world titles or Eddie retaining in his case and embracing at the end. And it wouldn't surprise me to see Impact want to do that with Taya and Johnny Impact. So I'm going with Taya. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And uh, without wanting to put the kibosh on this, uh, I-, I think your, your your second thing is absolutely right, Ro. Even so, I-, I got a press release tonight from Impact. So it's an official press release. So it's not like I- I'm spoiling anything or along those lines. Uh, and the press release is that this is the first time that a husband and wife have been challenging for the titles. So they're making a big deal about it uh, before the match, which does make me think that it's possibly going to be a story afterwards that a, a husband and wife have held the titles jointly. Now, as I said, this is not a spoiler. This is something that you're going to see in the dirt sheets by the time you, you, you hear this, this recording. So I, I've got a feeling that that could very well be the way they go. All right. I actually don't see a scenario at all where uh... – Taya wins. Um, I think Tessa is going to be a long reigning champion. 
and it's just going to be difficult to you know find her opponents and sometimes that's a problem with Te Tessa's a Tessa's a big deal in the company and they feature on feature her on television quite a bit so when you do that you got to keep throwing her opponents you know so um with the you know maybe a returning Diamante or something but that's not going to be on the level of Taya obviously they're going to have to I feel like this is kind of a broken record but you know introduce a couple new knockouts in there however this being said someone had said the other day on facebook oh they need new knockouts they don't have any knockouts i said the last episode had six six knockouts on it you know like there's and there's eight total that are being featured on the show there's you know it, maybe it doesn't feel that way but a lot of them are featured but as far as finding someone on her level you know to, to challenge her i would agree with roe i think I hope this becomes a feud. I mean, a, a rivalry, I should say. This could be a very classic, epic rivalry. Uh, one that I wouldn't mind watching for quite a while. So I think Ty, uh, I think Tessa absolutely comes out the victor here. And I, I really think, I'm just going on record, I, I think this is going to be the best knockouts match we've seen in quite some time. Oh, I think that the match is going to be fantastic. I really do. The What you said about... Tessa deserving a long reign. I think she will have a long reign. And but this match is a spoiler for the main event because I think if Tessa does win it, sorry, if Tessa loses, then they will go with the the double um, husband and wife combo. So I, I think this will be very very telling as to uh, a giveaway to to the main event. But I, I think it'll be a fantastic match. And you know, th there's no one's been able to really hang with Tessa so far because Sue Young hasn't, Ali hasn't. The only one that really has is Kiera. Strangely enough, she's the only one who's looked like a, a, a valid opponent for, you know. They had an excellent match, stuff. yeah. You think back, um, I forgot how long ago it was, but you think about when they included Matt Hardy into the main event, and it kind of just seemed tailored for him to finally win his first world title. You know we're walking away from this pay-per-view with some kind of feel-good moment. So, you know Impact would love nothing more to kind of give us that. So, yeah, like you're saying, Adam, it's going to really be telling. Like, this is going to really let us know the winner of this match, especially if Ty is, comes out with the belt, winning the belt, whether Johnny Impact, if they're going to go with Johnny Impact uh, beating Aries. Yeah, they decided with that match, hey, we're going to go for the feel-good moment as opposed to we got, you know, Drew working his way up the ranks, finally getting his, his big shot, big stage. EC3 hasn't been pinned. You know, but it, but instead we got we got a safer outcome or whatever. But that's uh, neither here nor there. A long long time ago, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I I, I want to say I don't think the person who takes the title off Tessa is on the roster right now. I'll just uh, I'll put it like that. I used to think uh, Ali was eventually going to do it, but I don't I don't think the person is on the roster right now. Let's move on to LAX versus the OGs. This has been one of the more enjoyable feuds on impact this year and i think they've done a good job in mexico as far as pumping the brakes on it a little bit you know they're still giving us they're still giving it to us but it's not um a real heavily featured part of the show because when you gotta you know this is the third time these guys are gonna are gonna go at it so you can't just keep you know f force feeding it so i think they pumped the brakes on it very well there's one thing i really noticed uh anytime the ogs are in the ring it's almost like the uh they want to make it as short as possible. You know, so the OGs had a couple enhancement talent, squash matches, whatever you want to call them. They, you know, they both lasted 30 seconds. And then when King had a match that lasted all of 30 seconds, like it seems like they're um, afraid that the crowd is going to give them crickets if they're in the ring with anyone besides LAX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. so uh, no, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Um, it has been very strange, isn't it? But I don't know why they'd get crickets because – King has been just fantastic on the mic. So you, you would think that he would garner a reaction, you know, and even the way that he won that match. So uh, it, it has been noticeable that, that it's been very, very short when, when they have been in the ring, but I just don't get why. Maybe it's because the guys aren't fit. I don't know. Maybe that's it. Maybe they're, they're, they're not batch fit and they can't go for a long time. Who knows? You know, my, my thing with this whole feud is just, it's really been you know, a sweep in LAX's case. Like, we've not seen the OGs get to come up and tell them once. So it's going to really be interesting. Um, I would have thought at these tapings we would have seen OGs cost LAX the titles where then that way, walking into this, LAX would really have a purpose of wanting to put the OGs away for good. OGs and King, I should say, away for good. So 
you know, I'm just interested to see how this turns out. And then I'm also as interested to see what can Conan do it, given his uh, stage and health. I know he most recently had surgery, but um, yeah, I'm really I really want to see what he can do. You know, when they announced he was having surgery, they also had announced very, uh, very low key that he was training for an in-ring return. Obviously not a full-time return, but I, I do remember they said that very quickly when that, when that story broke. So usually what they do when they have to protect a guy like this, it, it becomes a, you know, there's no rules, no holds barred. And it's going to be interesting because they, they seem to just, you know, whether it's a 5150 street fight or whatever, this it, it's all the same rules. You know what I mean? It's all the same stuff. Now, I think the cool thing obviously was last time it, it took place outdoors and I thought that was really, really well done. So I don't know that they can go back to that for bound for glory. You know, we always talk about, are they going to do another final deletion style match or, or whatever? And we always say, okay, this is the candidate for that to happen. And then the pay-per-view happens and nothing like that goes down. So I don't really know what to expect out of this match, but I think we are going to get a clean sweep. I think LAX is going to win because in wrestling, we see so much 50, 50 booking, you know, we rarely see like, you know, someone with just a dominant, uh, a dominant run, dominant outcome. So the other thing with that, though, is I just don't see what you could do creatively. You know, we're not we're not experts. We don't work for creative, but I don't see creative as a fan creatively what you could do with the OGs going forward here. Like you couldn't put them in a feud with another team. You know, that that's not going to happen. That's not going to work. And then King deserves to stick around long term. So this is it's just going to be interesting. The titles aren't on the line. I have no idea really what to expect from this. My, my only real prediction is that LAX is going to win, but I have no idea overall where it's going, which is awesome. We hate, we hate in wrestling where we're watching. We just know what's next. Just to pick up on Conan in the ring. Uh, I think Ro and I mentioned this on, on one of the reviews, but he has looked more coherent in the way he speaks and the way he's moving. He does look better. So you know, maybe he can go. Um, and, and I think that's one of the reasons why I suggested it could be a final deletion style match. By the way, when did final deletion become a style of match, by the way? But uh, we all know what we mean, don't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because once they did, you know, the Steiner match, a slam anniversary, it's kind of like, oh, okay. So anyway, um, you know, I, I think that's why, you know, to hide some of that stuff. But the, the one thing that's been noticed in the last few weeks is how big is King? Uh, I mean, he's massive. Um, and you don't really, you, you never used to think it when he used to come out as part of the, is it the DDC? Is that what they were called? I can't remember. <laughs> DCC. DCC. What did I say? DDC. <laughs> oh, oh, when, when he came out as ODB, he, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he never used to look that big. So, um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, uh, what, what happens next uh, with them, but yeah, fair play. I, this is the match I'm most probably looking forward to the most because it's so unpredictable. I mentioned this one or two times on, on the show before is that uh, I met King actually like a year ago today. Like I always go to shows for my birthday and I went to AAW last year. Oh, speaking of this, I'm going to, I'm going to break character here for a little bit, get away from the, uh, the show. So I got to tell you guys for my birthday travels, going to a wrestling show this year, we went to stride pro wrestling a couple nights ago, kind of a, it's a very small, company and they do monthly shows very small high school gyms type of thing but every year they do a fundraiser event and they have a uh you know a headliner so last year it was james storm it was supposed to be tyrus which good lord but they actually he actually canceled the last minute and james storm came so this year abyss came so we got to meet him so that was really cool and i was like we got to go there because impact hall of fame all that got to do it so uh when it met abyss the crazy thing about this stripe pro wrestling when they do this show this uh, fundraiser show is that it's done at a high school. A lot of the competitors are faculty from the school and, and they don't look like wrestlers. Like you're looking at them and you're just like, okay, dude, that dude's too old. Like, you know, there's a sixth grade teacher from another school, the principal I've seen female, uh, the female teachers before. But the funny thing is they actually wrestle. Like it's not some BS. Like they just hit like in the main, the main event was the principal against another dude in a last man standing match. And in the finish, they were at the top of a ladder on the outside and the principal dude like backdropped them off the ladder onto a table. So it's the craziest shit, man. And that same dude, uh, he missed a moonsault right before that head first onto a ladder and it was, got busted open. Like craziest shit I've ever seen at a wrestling event live. But I just wish I went to a school like this coming up. I mean, when I say they're like trained wrestlers, but they still look like they're school teachers, 
it's it's the craziest shit like you ever seen. But listen, yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun, man. Um, but let me get back to. I mean, what match we're talking about, we're talking about LAX. What I wanted to say is last year when I went to AEW and I met King, like he's a big dude. I, I agree with Adam. When you saw him with DCC, you just seemed like he looked like he was just like this short dude in the mix. Just kind of like Austin Aries. And Austin Aries is like 5'10", but on TV, it's like he's like some little dude or something. But yeah, King is a big dude. I mean, his hands were huge. His head was huge. Like he was just, and uh, like I've said before, he has one of those handshakes where it hurts when he shakes it. So just big motherfucker. Uh, that really, really caught me off guard. Uh, Ro, do you got anything else? I kind of intervened in there. Do you got anything about uh, LAX and OGs? Yeah, I'm going with LAX. I think they end their feud with the OGs, but I think the feud with King continues because I think King sticks around. Spawn, yeah. I, they, they've got to keep King. Uh, it would be criminal to let him go. And um, Although when the OGs are, are defeated for the third time, they have to go. But I just, I, I, they got to do something with King. I wouldn't mind even seeing a bit of um, a heel turn by LAX again. Oh, I always say heel turn. Oh, stop it, Adam. But, you know, maybe siding with King, you know, and uh, and then Conan has to, you know, disappears for a while. Maybe that that's a way to go. I, I don't know. But, you know, I, I just really want to see them keep King around. So there's one thing I got to throw here, throw in before we move on. Diamante has not been featured in this at all except for the very beginning of it she has tweeted out and this was about three weeks ago like what side am i going to be on and i don't know if any, either of you guys heard the teleconference the yeah uh, they call the press pass now the uh, press pass podcast lax or actually ortiz was on it with homicide a couple weeks ago and someone had asked ortiz about diamante and he was like yeah you know she's he said something like she's you know she's out there she's she's coming back whatever because i don't know what side she's on so like he slid that in there, and this was, uh, you know, this wasn't just something she tweeted weeks ago, and, you know, we all forgot about it. I mean, we all forgot about it, but for him several weeks later to say the same thing, well, I don't know what side she's on. Like, I, this is where I believe she has to be somewhat featured into this, and how they do it, I don't know. I don't know why they would team her up with the OG. She was the one from the very beginning that, that didn't want to fuck with King, so this is going to be really, really unpredictable, and I'm looking forward to it quite a bit. Six man tag team match. Now this is again another champion along with LAX not defending the title. Seems to bother a lot of people. I, I really don't care to be honest. I just want to see good matches, good action. And this was one I, I predicted too, but it was I think everyone, most people, 80% of the people predict predicted this one coming. And it, it was uh Brian Cage teaming up with the Lucha Brothers, Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix against Sammy Callahan and OVE. I've cooled a little bit on Sammy and OVE. Only because I don't like this mini draw shit where he's he's uh, copying everything he does. Like that is the one thing on Impact Television right now that I I hate, cannot stand. Like I might be watching something I don't care for this. I I do care for this. Like that I absolutely cannot stand. And I think it takes away from OVE a lot. And if they're telling some story, then you know I'll put my foot in my mouth down the road. But I don't like it personally. So Adam, we'll go for go with you first. Uh, six man tag team match. What do you got on this? I'm going to go big show on us here, and I'm going to go from my heel persona to my face persona and say, completely disagree with you. I I quite like the OVE with the uh, the mini draw. I, I I'm quite enjoying all this, but but as far as this match, it, it is a complete misstep for me. They they should have had, uh, and it could very well happen in this last episode. I don't think it will though. That they should have had Callahan versus Cage and the Luchas versus OVE. Uh, I I think it's a misstep putting the, the six of them in the same ring. I, I actually had, had predicted, um, and this was months ago, I actually thought LAX and the Lucha Brothers were going to meet at Bound for Glory. That would have been blown the roof off the place. It would have made a lot of sense, but what do you got, Ro? Um, before I give that, I think, too, it does bother me that you got two of your hottest acts champion and neither of them are defending their titles. And I'm with Adam. You could have easily had Brian Cage versus Sammy Callahan. I will say, I... I'm going to go, and I'm probably reaching, but I'm going with OVE in this only because I feel like we've seen different iterations of all six of these guys um, interacting with one another, and we've always seen the Lucha Brothers and Cage, you know, be on the upper hand. So I think it's time for OVE to really get their comeuppance. Um, if I had to guess who's going to eat the pin for that to happen, I'll go with Phoenix, but I'm, I'm going with OVE. 
I, I, I'll join in on that. I, I think OVE will win as well. I do as well. Clean sweep. I think uh, Sammy's going to position himself to be the next challenger for the X Division Championship. This is something I have felt for a long time, even before this feud even kicked off, because I feel like they need to get Sammy into a title picture. They're very comfortable with Aries as the champion, so you can't really get heel Sammy into it. However, if Sammy and Aries were to do a program with their respective teams, I think that would actually be phenomenal down the road. So I actually kind of hope they do that, even though it's two heel factions. But I think uh, I think Sammy needs a win. I feel like he's always losing when it comes down to you know blowing off a feud, and and usually I think in traditional wrestling the the bad guy loses. But Sammy Sammy's pretty hot. I don't know if you guys uh, if you listen to Jim Ross a whole lot. I I rarely do anymore. I used to quite a bit. And anytime he talks about impact, he's like, they just need someone to get hot. You know, like he's blaming it on that. And I'm just like, what, what's fucking hotter right now than, than Sammy Callahan and uh, Tessa Blanchard and, and Pentagon and Brian Cage like, and Austin Airy? Come on. I don't, I don't even want to hear that crap anymore. What Eddie Edwards was doing. I don't even want to hear that BS anymore. But uh, this this match, I think, um, I'm kind of looking at these matches again. Th there's some there's some good matches here. Um, I think this is going to be the one, though, that, that, that really steals the show. And I think it's going to set something up for the X Division. I really think the X Division is now the mid-card title. And that's why, you know, I don't think we're going to see DJZ on television again. I worry we're not going to see Desmond Xavier, even though he tweeted just a couple days ago that uh, we would. But I think they're... I think they're officially getting away from little guys being the being the X division uh, champion. I think they're they're almost going to be there as jobbers, so to speak. I really, really, really do. But uh, we'll see going forward. But this one uh, should be absolutely excellent. Um, Eddie Edwards has a match with Moose. Now I had predicted that I actually thought Cross and Moose were going to team up against Eddie and a partner. So there is some mystery two bound for glory this year i actually thought eddie was going to have a mystery partner and i i called with a lot of confidence that it was going to be davy richards i know he said he was coming back in 2019 but i feel like no nah, he's just saying that like he's this dude's going to show up so and maybe he does show up who knows but i wasn't expecting a one-on-one -on -one match with this but we're getting it and i think heel moose has been a lot of fun ro what do you got on this yeah this was interesting um I'm going to go with Moose, I think, riding his this new persona that he's donning now, Money Moose. I I see him coming up victorious, but I think the feud will continue. Um, I think this past episode of Impact, though, with Eddie, and you tell me, I want your guys' take on it. We've seen him kind of resort back into the old Eddie. I didn't really get the unhinged character that we've, you know, been seeing most recently with him. But with that said, yeah, I think the one-on-one -on -one was a nice way to go. I never in a doubt in my mind that I think we were going to get Killer Cross, you know, tagging with Moose. I think with Killer Cross, we're going to see him twice. Well, not well, only once because with the most recent stipulation, I think he'll accompany Moose and um, probably help aid him in the win. Yeah, I can't really disagree with Roe again here. Maybe we'll be spending too much time with each other, Roe, on the reviews. But uh, well, we seem to be going the, the same way on this one again. Um Eddie, I, I, I've really enjoyed Eddie's work uh, as a, well, I suppose, tweener. Is that, was that what you'd call him? He's, he's not a heel. He's not a, a, a straight baby face. So I've really enjoyed his work. And, um, yeah, Moose has only just turned. So you feel like he has to, you know, that this feud has to continue. I don't think this is going to be the end of it. And and at somewhere, Killer Cross is going to have to feature, whether it's the main event or you know, in this match, but he's going to have to feature some way. So um, I, I got Moose to the win. Is that what you got two row? I don't know if you already said your prediction or not. Yeah, I got Moose. Okay. I'm going with Moose. Yeah, I'm going with Moose too. And I agree with uh, with Ro with what he said. I got that feeling too with the last um, episode that he was uh, reverting back a little bit. Not obviously not to square one, but I think that I think there was a point with Tommy Dreamer where I think he got too much. You know, and I think he's dialing it down a little, which is uh, which is fine. I just, I'm okay with him kind of unhinged, but I would just like to see him a little darker, not so much like crazy. But I'm a big Eddie fan. Uh, that segment last week was one of the corniest, cheesiest things I ever seen in my life, but I was into it. Like it almost made no sense whatsoever in the in the in the whole. Adam Adam and I were talking about this on the phone yesterday. Uh, and I'll give you a chance to talk about it again, Adam. Like, it 
it almost made no sense whatsoever in the way they did it. But I was I was really into it because sometimes you can't take wrestling too seriously. And and I'm a big Alicia fan, so I thought she looked really good, by the way. But um, that whole thing was just really <laughs> was just really weird. But this this isn't the end of that. No way. Uh, do you got anything you want to say on, say on that, Adam? Yeah, well, I mean, just going back to that segment, I mean, it was hilariously bad. I mean, I mean, that's all we can say about it because there seemed to be absolutely no danger to Alicia uh, sitting there. She was just sat there. It wasn't like Moose was had a hostage or anything. She was just sat there with a glass of water. And I have never knew a glass of water could be so devastating because Moose sold that water like a bitch, didn't he? I mean, he was all over the place and that gave Eddie the chance to, to attack him. And then when they escaped barely two feet outside the door he calls up uh johnny impact and johnny impact's got some fantastic coverage on his phone because it <laughs> rings it, he picks it up before it rings it's amazing um I, I was just the whole thing was just laughably bad um because you know it happens all the time the, you know i'm in glasgow you know which is quite a tough city you know and all the time i see muggings happening and literally as soon as the the, the victim escapes two feet away from the you know the perpetrator he pulls out his phone and makes a call to his mate so uh, it was very realistic, is what I'm trying to say. I think I think uh, Alicia plays a role, maybe not at Bound for Glory, especially because, you know, I talked about this at Slammiversary. I was like, I felt either in the LAX match or the Sammy, not a, no, Eddie and Tommy, I was like, Alicia's going to get involved or Diamante's going to get involved. And now we're here saying, I'm at least I am, I'm saying the same thing. One of these girls is going to show up. I mean, Alicia did show up at the end of the match, but... Her inclusion in this whole thing, it, it's I feel like it's it's throwing us off the scent. Um, I don't know if she's gonna turn on Eddie or or what, but I just I just feel like she has a bigger role in all this than we're we're seeing on TV. You know, we're seeing in the storyline. So, but I think this is uh, gonna be the match of if anything that uh, we're gonna continue to see going forward. I uh, just one more comment on the match, if I can. Yeah. Um, do you think that Kenny, the kendo stick, I mean, I made a joke about this on, on the review of the week, referring to Moppy uh, that P Perry Saturn had. Do you reckon they're going to make us a big thing that he's always going to carry the kendo stick and it's going to become a, a character that he talks to? Or do you think this is just a, he, he did it for, a, a you know, just for a skit? No, no, I, th I think it's uh, going forward. I mean, even a look at the Bound for Glory picture, he's got he's got it in the picture with him. So I think that's uh, going forward what he's going to do. All right, so now we're going to get into Matt Seidel and Ethan Page. They're taking on Rich Swan and a mystery guest. So we're going to talk about this one, and then we're going to get into two matches that we assume is probably going to happen. But we didn't want to throw it um, before all these matches in case they don't. So tag team match, um, you know, I actually thought I had predicted they were going to give us some kind of fun opener much like Slammiversary a couple of years ago where Jarrett was in charge and, you know, threw, threw the train wreck together. And uh, even, I think it was, yeah, Redemption this year, Brian Cage and all the, the smaller guys. I thought we were going to get something with some luchadors and all that stuff. I was uh, way off base on that one. But uh, Ethan Page very randomly teams up with Matt Seidel. So I was reading about this online. I don't know if you guys saw anything about it. I guess somebody else... I guess they had options A and B. I think, uh, if from what I'm understanding, that Ethan Page was like a third, a third option. So they had someone who was supposed to be Seidel's partner. He got injured. Then they had another guy who, was, who they were going to use, and he also was injured. So they said, "Damn, who who are we going to use?" And they said, "Well, we got Ethan Page under contract because they had him, you know, under contract as a uh, Chandler Park." So they called him up to say, "Hey, can you be in Mexico?" He's like, "Yeah, absolutely." And he had some passport issues, but he uh, he made it there and got thrown in. So that's why I think where it feels a little. So that's why I think it feels a little bit random because they don't even look like they go together. But I'm into it. He's a, uh, a talented guy, a very good addition to the roster, and this should be it should it should be a good match. I don't see why it wouldn't. I don't think it's gonna um, blow the roof off, but it, I think it's gonna be pretty entertaining. The set, actually, I say that, but Seidel and uh, Rich Swan had a really good match a couple weeks ago. So, Adam, we'll go to you. Go to you first on this. Uh, do you have any thoughts on the whole mystery partner thing? So let's keep in mind this is very likely the opening 
match of the show. So some of these people who are acting like Kenny Omega is going to show like that's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, of course it's not. It's CM Punk, obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. The face um, of the, CM Punk, the face of the Global Wrestling Network. Yeah, and and Conor McGregor is going to face Eli Drake. Um, no. Uh, well, to answer the question, do I have any ideas who the mystery partner is? No, I, I don't. But I don't think it's going to be anyone outstanding. I, I've been a little bit disappointed by the energy levels of, of which Rich Swan, but Matt Seidel has been fantastic. And, you know, I have no problems with um, uh, Ethan Page being being uh, teamed with, with Matt Seidel. I quite like Ethan Page and his promo the other day was excellent. One comment I do want to make, because we're not doing the review this week, uh, but it was something that occurred to me during all the promos with Matt Seidel this week. If any of you watch South Park, Matt Seidel looks like the Canadian characters in South Park. He's got the same... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as he's got the same eyes and, and look and the way his mouth moves. It's just like Terence and Philip or something like that. Anyway, that was just an aside. Uh, so, sorry, Matt, if you listen to the show, um, because I think y- his work has been absolutely sterling. And, um, you know, I wouldn't even mind if very soon he's X Division champion again, because I just think he's been fantastic. Very, very entertaining. So this match, I think, will be good. And I, I really hope we don't get P.T. Williams or someone like that as the mystery partner. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good match. When I said I don't think it's going to blow the roof off, I mean, I, I just... I think we're going to get a, a mix of different styles in this. You know, Ethan Page wrestles a, a different style than these guys, and we don't even know who the mystery partner is. So I don't know if we're going to get, like, this all-out X Division match. I think they're um, going to try to tell a story, a different kind of story with this one. Um, I'll, and I'll give my thoughts further on, on who I think. Uh, what do you got, Ro? As far as the mystery, um, I'm like you guys. I don't know. The one thing I hope they don't do, it wouldn't surprise me, is if it's Abyss. So to kind of try to play off of, you know, you think about Chandler Park was a cousin of Joseph Park. So Ethan Page, Abyss, you know, but um, as far as match, I'm really looking forward to see what Ethan Page can do because we really didn't really see what he could bring in the ring, in the impact ring. And I thought that promo that he cut, man, that really had me looking forward to seeing what he can do. And I'm glad that you clarified, BQ, that he is under contract. Because I, I had thought that, you know, maybe he was on a per appearance deal and this was just going to be a one-time deal. So I'm really looking forward to see what he can do as far as the outcome of the match. Well, um, I think it's going to all be dependent on who the mystery opponent is. If the mystery opponent is someone who's returning or like just say someone that's probably not known by the casual fan, then I think they'd want to give Ethan Page, especially the big win, well, Ethan Page and Seidel. But if it's going to be someone just say, dare I say, if it were Jericho, you know they're going to go with Jericho and Swan. So um, after waffling back and forth, I'll just go with Rich Swan and the mystery opponent. I must have missed this because both of you talked about Ethan Page cutting a promo. I didn't. I must have missed it. I don't remember him saying anything at all. Was it happened on this past episode? Yeah, yeah. It was. It was after the. It was like a backstage promo. I I totally missed it. One hundred percent missed it. So when I brought up him being under contract and uh, what what I was told by someone within the company, and you know, I don't know how how totally accurate this is. You know what I mean? But I pretty much believe the person you know there's different tiers of the contracts so like those those guys that are um you know the alleys the eli drakes that are you know on a uh salary deal or whatever and then you got people who are under contract but they're still paid per appearance but they're still you know contracted to the company and then you got the the rebels the casey spinelli's where they're not you know they, they're strictly per appearance when needed you know hey when we call you uh, we can trust you we'll bring you in but they're not, you know, necessarily like, you know, they're not even on the roster page. So, you know, he kind of fell into that middle category, I guess. And he was saying that the Chandler Park character was not sustainable long term. He couldn't he's not going to be able to take that on the indies and, and make money, um, which makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, crazy, you know, like other companies would have kept that guy going for Lord knows how long. So there's a few different things they could do here. Do I think it's going to be Chris Jericho? No, I don't. Do I think it's, you know, going to be. I think the coolest one would be, uh, you know, Neville, if he showed up, uh, whatever his name is, Pac or whatever, I, awful name, awful name for a wrestler. Um, if he shows up, don't bring that name with him. But uh, he's someone that would actually be really cool on a really, you know, a buzz generator. But it's just like Rose said, I don't think this person is going to be th- this massive superstar. 
Um, I, I also hope it's not, you know, just PD Williams coming out, you know, it just seems like, Hey, we got to play it safe. Let's use PD. So there's a couple different things they could do here. Um, I think if Desmond Xavier came out, I think that would be really cool because, uh, He's not a huge star, but people really want to see him wrestle. So if he were to come out, I think it would be cool. I don't think it's going to be anyone else from the roster, like DJZ or anything. There's, you know, people that he has teamed with, like ACH, who's been on Impact, Shane Strickland. Like, these would be pretty cool. And then there's also Chris Saban, which people think, oh, maybe, well, maybe it's Chris Saban. Um, he wrestled on the One Night Only show, I think. I think it was a One Night Only show. And Rich Swan has always said in his story... You know, even when he was doing the interview with Alicia or they're just doing press, you know, I watched the X Division growing up. You know, I was watching these guys and these guys and these guys. So while it makes sense to him grab someone on the roster or someone from, you know, he teams with on the indies, MLW, whatever it is, I don't, actually don't think he wrestles MLW. Maybe he does. Um, I think he tells a story of I grew up watching the X Division and I think he's going to bring someone back. Not, not, you know, not like Jerry Lynn or something like that, but, you know, I'm not saying someone, I'm saying someone who can still go. So I actually think Saban, Saban is, I feel like it's some serious fantasy booking, but for me, he's, he's, my money is on him. Anyone else got anything on this one before we move on to a, a couple of matches we think are going to happen? Well, if we're going to throw some other names out there, um, neither have been mentioned so far, but, but maybe someone like Big Cass, possibly. Oh, Jesus. Um, uh, well, no, just he's a free agent. He's, he's, he's a name, you know, or even worse, Enzo Amor, you know. Um, but I've got a feeling one of those two might show up, you know, because they're big enough names and they're free agents, you know, to, to do it. I, I, I wouldn't want to see Enzo Amor's OK on the mic, but he, he's a despicable human being from what I can gather. Um, well, <laughs> that's what my feelings on him anyway. Um, so, yeah, so I wouldn't like to see him there, but I think he'd most probably you know, cause some controversy and, you know, get some uh, column inches, certainly, if he appeared. James Storm, maybe? Who knows? Ne <laughs> never. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, obviously, he he didn't get a big title run, but there's nothing for him in Impact. Um, yeah, I think we all would like to see it, but there's there's no way. I really think it's going to be someone uh, of the X Division's past, but someone who's, like, relevant still. So... We will see. So we're going to get into a couple of matches that we think are going to happen. And we're going to talk about them like they're going to happen. Because I think con common sense probably says that they are. So let's talk about Ali Sue Young first. And then we're going to talk about Eli Drake potentially doing an open challenge. I think I, I just think both things make sense. And I think Ali and Sue kind of have their final battle. So if this were to happen, this was something that has been going on a long, long time. Um, I love Sue Young absolute lover and, and i've always liked ali as ali's character transitions you know as i've told people be careful what you wish for it seems like she's actually become less popular now <laughs> now that she's uh becoming that serious character that everybody has wanted her to be and you know i don't show up on the review with you guys too much but i 100 percent predicted that the reason kiera got that win um was because was, she was going to get a match with sue young and then she was going to put her in a coffin i was 100 percent sure she keeps saying we don't i'm not gonna let anyone go in there again she said it over and over and over and over obviously someone's gonna go in a coffin especially the one girl who's been randomly tagging around with her as her best friend all of a sudden so i totally i totally felt that was gonna happen and i thought it was really well done i was i was super excited with it i thought ali's breakdown afterwards was a little silly but as far as like during uh while it was happening and she's like no you know i thought that was really good stuff really good television but Ali always seems to get involved in feuds that last forever or, you know, angles that last for forever. And that's kind of where we're at with this. So, Ro, talk about Ali Sue Young first. If this is to happen, what are you expecting? You know, I don't know. I could see some sort of angle. Um, one would, or I would just guess, and it all would depend on her status. Maybe we get a Rosemary uh, return. Obviously not active, but just her appearing. I think that can go a long way. Um, but yeah, I'm really dumbfounded. I don't know. I, I, I think we're going to get Allie coming out, probably addressing Sue. But after that, I don't know what else they go from, you know, go from there. And I mean, you know, the one thing they could do is maybe Kiera rises, but she aligns with Sue because uh, Allie allowed her to get buried when she promised she wouldn't. Like, it's it's so many different paths, but I do think we're going to get Allie to coming out. She's going to do something because she did state that I know what I have to do. So I think 
that just led me to believe maybe, you know, look for Rosemary or something. But yeah, I really don't know. Yeah, if I'm going to go for a prediction, I think Rose is right in that Rosemary's going to feature in this. And, and to me, it's going to be the old, um, the coffin opens and Rosemary's going to be inside and, and either attack Ali or, or, or Sue Young. But uh, yeah, I, I think Rosemary's definitely going to be involved and she'll be in the coffin at some point and come out and surprise either Sue Young or Rosemary. Common sense would be like, Ali has to win this thing. But if she does... What in the hell do you do with Sue Young? I mean, there's there's nothing you can do with her at that point. Like, you have to completely change. They have to take her off TV for a while and try to find a way to to bring her back in. The Rosemary thing makes a lot of sense too. But if you notice, with a lot of these matches, we're talking about people randomly showing up and people returning and people getting involved. And um, you know, they're talking about we want clean matches. So I don't think there's going to be interference in these matches when we're saying people are going to get involved, aside from maybe Killer Cross, but. I think there could be an interference there, but we keep talking about people returning and and all this stuff. So yeah, I don't really know. I, I could see that happening, but I also feel like Rosemary might be showing up. Um, she has to show up on something live. She can't show up on a taped show. So I I, I, I agree. She's got to be involved in this in, in one way, shape or form. I just, I don't know who I got. I, I, common sense is Ali. I just think Sue Young is going to win because you can't, you just can't, uh, do anything with her going forward for a long time because she's wrestled a lot of the knockouts much like tessa so what the hell are you gonna really do with her and it wouldn't make sense for ali to get that win because rosemary is the one who really has a you know a score to settle with her at the end of the day you can't have ali's not gonna win and then rosemary can come back and win too another option they could go with uh if, if they've been watching the book of jericho is that uh rosemary comes back as one of the undead bridesmaids and you know, and does the old switcheroo in that fashion. That would be badass. <laughs> that would actually be really cool. But, I mean, think about Casey Spinelli, who we hardly see on TV. She came out as a bridesmaid. Everyone knew it was her. So it would be pretty difficult. And I know Rosemary's talking about coming back with a new gimmick or a new look. So maybe she maybe she could pull it off. I think that's uh, quite possible. Well, but no, not as an undead bridesmaid, but as in she's disguised as one. You know, in yeah, in yeah, the, that, I know that's a uh, bring side. Yeah, yeah, I just meant you know, KC. Everyone, we all knew it was her, so it would be have to you know, take a real uh, makeup job. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, that would be quite cool to do. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I definitely think that Rosemary's going to be there, but I don't necessarily think that she's going to align with Ali. Um, I, I think possibly she could align with Sue Young in some fashion uh, and just so that it gives a rosemary alley feud and sue young doesn't have to take a loss then she can go on and do something and you know and, and carry on yeah um i mean just what you guys were saying i mean i and like i said i'm just back to what i was saying as well that i just don't know there's so many different ways they can go i do like adam's idea of her disguising as a bridesmaid but she'd really have to um change her appearance a little bit so people can't spot it out because that would be something that someone would probably look for so um yeah we just have to see i'm excited about that well let's hope that we get some follow-up from it at, at first yeah that's something that um there's a lot of things they can do with it they can it's almost getting stale to the point of, of being stale uh Speaking of which, I saw this article on Facebook that really made me laugh yesterday. They were, it was like wrestling, it, PWI reports that freaking two asshats from NXT were possibly getting called up to, uh, to join the New Day because WWE is afraid the New Day is getting stale. I was like, those motherfuckers have been stale for like three years. Now, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, <laughs> really got a chuckle out of me when I read that. But anyway, this is an Impact Wrestling Podcast, the number one place to be for news, reviews, interviews, previews, and more Impact wrestling it is the impact lounge let's get into um something else i'm uh it, it, for those of you still listening i'm going to do an upload this week because there's talk of uh, chris jericho maybe showing up and i'm uh i'm going to fancy fantasy book uh how i think jericho will show up and uh i told one person he said it was actually a really good idea so i'm going to tell these two uh jokers offline when we get off and um and all that good stuff so let's talk about eli drake Potentially having an open challenge. I, I don't think this is going to be Chris Jericho. That just makes too, way too much sense uh, for him to just show up. The uh, The only thing I want to say about this, I think it is going to be a way to debut someone. I think it's going to be a big deal. I think it's going to be a buzz generator. I don't think it's just going to be, you know, we keep saying Petey Williams coming out. Like, I really think 
you know, Petey Williams actually answered an EC3 Open Challenge last year. So uh, I think this is going to be a really big deal. My opinion on this one, um, maybe a little bit out of left field. I think uh, even though they haven't really told a story too good up to this point, I think whoever uh, Scarlett Bordeaux finds in her talent search is going to be the uh, challenger for Eli Drake. So uh, if you watched the Twitch show last night, Scarlett wrestled as a baby face. And she's almost acted like a baby face on the show with the exception of the initial promos she did. You know, especially the one with Alicia. So I don't know if they know what they're doing with her yet. That's that's my out of left field opinion, though. Uh, Adam, we'll go to you first on uh, Eli Drake and the possible open challenge. Yeah, the open challenge has been a lot of fun. The, the only thing I worry about is that since he signed the contract extension, he's had not really much to do. And if they bring out a big name, you fancy the big name going over Eli Drake, which is a shame for Eli, and it doesn't give you confidence that they know how to use him still. So I, I don't know who it's going to be. I think, as you said, it is obvious that if Jericho is going to debut somewhere, it's going to be here. But other than that, I, I don't know who it could be. I, I can't actually think who is, is a big enough name to come down to, to make news headlines. But um, maybe Roe will come up with someone. What you got, Roe? Well, for this, I got two in fantasy book and hat 101. Um, I think that they do. They kill two birds with one stone. I think we get a return from somebody that maybe we haven't seen who puts on a competitive match with Eli only to come up short. But and then we get the um, him. Uh, we get the date. Well, I don't want to say debut, but then we get an appearance of Chris Jericho on the mic similar to what Chris Jericho had. Uh, 18 years ago when he debuted in uh, went on the mic against The Rock. So I think he goes toe-to-toe with Eli. Nothing physical, just on the mic-wise. So I'm going for open challenge. We get, I'll just throw someone out of the hat, maybe a Desmond Xavier who, uh, you know, re-debuts with the company. And uh, after Eli runs through him, then we get Jericho coming out and challenging Eli for a future match. I want I'm going to, I want to say this real quick. I, I I have this weird feeling that David Arquette is going to answer the opening cha- open challenge, which uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I just have this like weird feeling. But I but when I was thinking about that in my head, I was thinking of the same thing. Roe is like he would come out. Eli Drake would probably make short work of him. He would get some headlines, and then someone would come out. You know, someone else, even if it was just doing mic work. So I I actually can see. Something like that happening. Someone someone uh, who's not the actual opponent. Well, they are the opponent, but Eli Drake leaves the victor, but he also leaves involved in something bigger going forward. Uh, would that would that do it for you, Adam, if it was uh, something like that? If it was David Arquette, I'm all for it. I mean, we talked about this on the, the review the other week. I, I'm, a, I'm an Arquette fan. I am. And I think... The fact that he's a celebrity is, and the, the you know the storyline that he was involved in in WCW has hindered him as a person, you know, and it's unfair because you know he was a Hollywood star, albeit a minor one, and he loved wrestling. And if someone says they're going to put the belt on you in a creative way, you're going to do it. And he's hated f- for a decision that Russo made, and it's unfair. He obviously loves the business; he's trained hard, so I- I'd all be up for it. I don't think he'd beat Eli Drake. I think that would be a mistake. But, you know, as someone who can be on a television show, maybe bring in a few eyes. Maybe he's past his best, you know, with regards to Hollywood status. But, yeah, I'm all for it. Uh, what you both said about someone coming out afterwards, yeah, I can see that. But the one thing I'll disagree on row with is if, if um, Jericho does show up in Impact, I don't think we're going to get a long program with him where every week he's cutting promos, which leads to a match. I think it's going to be you know, a couple, one set of tapings and that's it. Same here. Same here. Yeah. And you know what I'm I'm guessing? I think I could see them using them in two different separate feuds because you'd like to think even though Eli's big time, you know, they'd want to put him in some type of title program. Not saying he'll win, but, you know, could you imagine you do a headline some show with whoever the world champion is versus Chris Jericho? I think that would generate a lot of buzz. So, but yeah, I, I think just a set of tapings I could see. It'll most probably end up being someone like Bully Ray because, he, I mean, he's a, a wrestling whore, isn't he? He'll just turn up for the money and then trash Impact after he leaves. So <laughs> it'll, it'll most probably be, it'll be someone like Bully Ray um, who comes back. 
So let's hope Bound for Glory is going to be a, a good show. We were um, we were very honest last year that Bound for Glory last year we did not really care for the show. And, uh, you know, you could say sometimes we're negative, most of the time we're positive, whatever. And, like, we were, we pretty much were stay sh- straight shooters on that show. We, we didn't enjoy the pay-per-view last year. And uh, that kind of sucked. So I don't think this is going to be on the level of Slammiversary. But I think this is going to be really good because there's there's a you know a bit again very similar to Slammiversary. There's about four matches on there that really you know can be a you know Matt classics. You know people really can go, and um, I mean it should be a good show. There's there's no reason it shouldn't be. It's a better card than last year's Bow for Glory by leaps and bounds. You know we're getting Johnny Impact in the main event again, but. You know, you remember we had Eli Drake, Johnny Impact, Alberto El Patron, that whole train wreck. Alberto El Patron came out and sucked the life out of the crowd uh, with a long promo. Then we had that Ishimori Tyson Dukes match that no one was uh, interested in. And, and those really sucked the life out of what was going on. So let's hope for a good show. Uh, any closing thoughts, Adam, on Bound for Glory? I actually think it's it's got the potential to be a, an amazing show. There's a lot of surprises in there. The, the build has has been poor in some areas, but in other areas it's been excellent. So, you know, I, I really am genuinely excited for it. And the, what to me makes a great pay per view card is you can't 100 percent predict any of the matches on there, and that to me is is a great card. You know, where you don't know what's going to happen. So. Um, very much looking forward to it and as a closing thought i really hope that they make the right decision and keep the belt on aries i I really hope they do as well and uh like you said about being unpredictable um hurls from the heel cast he has a group on facebook and they you know they do a pick them challenge where you predict the pay-per-views and uh, i I partake in the wwe ones and uh the last two i've got in uh, a 13 out of 16 correct and I don't know shit about what they do. So it's uh, it, it's cool to go into this and not really know what's going to happen. Uh, what are your closing thoughts, Ro? I just think while there's the lack of title defenses that I've seen some actually, including myself, kind of uh, soured on, I do think they have an opportunity to really put on a compelling show. I mean, you think about what they did with Slammiversary, Hell, even Redemption, that we all deem as the B-level pay-per-view. I really think they can do something special. And, you know, like you were saying, Adam, as long as they don't go the predictable route, um, I think they'll, you know, they will they'll can they can knock it out of the park. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, one final thought, actually, if I can, is the one thing that they didn't do at Slammiversary was have any surprises at all. It was all pretty much clean finishes right across the card. Um and I remember waking up the next morning because obviously I'm in the UK, so we don't get to watch it live over here. Uh, and I was actually a bit disappointed when I read the results, thinking, oh, I was really hoping so-and-so was going to turn up or, or something like that. So I actually want a bit of shock and awe this time around, something con- controversial. I do too, because they didn't, they didn't really uh, necessarily do that for Redemption either. You know, They're, they they kept it very uh, traditional. So I, I'm ready for something to shock us because they do some really good television as far as being unpredictable. You know, um, if, if you miss spoilers, I guess the Ethan page thing didn't get spoiled at all. Like that was a uh, pretty much everyone, you know, that was new to everyone, but you know, like the thing that happened with moose and cross, you know, like, damn, I saw that online right before I watched the show. And I, I wish I would have seen it. Cause that was really unpredictable. They have the ability to prove to, uh, to book some really unpredictable stuff. So I would like to see it live, like no bullshit, no, no, uh, you know, I'm going to catch spoilers. Like I want to see something predictable live. And this is, this is when I want to see it or something unpredictable live. I should say, this is when I want to see it right now bound for glory. So let's hope it happens. Thanks for tuning in, listening to the show. There's going to be some changes to the channel after bound for glory. We'll fill you in on those a little bit later for Adam and Roe. This is BQ. Talk to you soon. Peace.